Let's look at the difference between strong and weak acids. This diagram represents a container of HA molecules. This is the acid before it has been dissolved in water and has ionized. Now, after water is added, that will determine whether or not it is a strong or a weak acid. In the first container, notice that all of the molecules of HA have ionized into hydrogen ion and A negative ion. This is 100% ionized. That means this is a strong acid. When all of the HA molecules ionize into the anion and cation, you have 100% ionization, which is a strong acid. Strong acids are good conductors of electricity. Now let's consider another example. In this example, we see that we don't have complete ionization. In fact, we still have a lot of HA molecules that are unionized. We only have very few hydrogen ions and A negative ions. This is partial ionization. When you have an acid that only partially ionizes in water, that is a weak acid. Weak acids can be considered either weak electrolytes or non-electrolytes, depending on the sensitivity of the conductivity meter. Acid-base neutralization. In general, acid plus base yields salt and water. All neutralization reactions are double displacement reactions in which the positive ions change places with one another. Take a look. The hydrogen and the sodium are going to change places so that you wind up with sodium chloride and water. In the next example, you have HCl reacting with magnesium hydroxide. Again, the hydrogen and the magnesium are going to change places, and you're going to wind up with the salt, magnesium chloride, and two water molecules. Remember, a salt is just a general term for an ionic substance. Magnesium chloride is ionic. That's because magnesium is a metal, chlorine is a nonmetal. Metals and nonmetals form ionic bonds. In the last example, sulfuric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide. The sodium and the hydrogen are going to change places, winding up with the salt, sodium sulfate, and two water molecules. Neutralization is a very important reaction because we can use acid-base titrations, a procedure that will allow us to determine the molarity of an unknown. In the first diagram, we see a 50 milliliter burette containing sodium hydroxide. We know the molarity of the sodium hydroxide. We then begin to add slowly sodium hydroxide to a flask containing some acid of unknown molarity. When we get to the end point, the indicator changes color and we can measure the volume of sodium hydroxide needed to accurately titrate the acid. Because acid plus base yields salt and water, and when neutralization occurs, the indicator changes color. The formula we're going to use to calculate the molarity of the unknown is MA times VA equals MB times VB. Now remember, molarity is defined as moles per liter. When we reach the end point, the moles of acid will be equal to the moles of base. That's what neutralization is. So let's consider this problem. 35.62 milliliters of sodium hydroxide is neutralized with the addition of 25.2 milliliters of 0.0998 molar HCl. What's the concentration of sodium hydroxide? We're just going to plug those numbers into our formula. Molarity of acid, 0.0998, times the volume of the acid, 25.2, is equal to the unknown molarity of the base, Mb, that's our unknown, 
times the volume of the base. When we calculate, we wind up with a molarity of 0.07059 molar sodium hydroxide. Titration is an important procedure used to determine the molarity of an unknown. Naming acids. Now there are two types of acids. On the left side we see that some acids only have two elements. They all begin with the prefix hydro and end in ic. So for example, when you hear the name hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, those have only two elements and they always begin with hydrogen. So we're only talking about hydrogen and a non-metallic anion. Now some acids have more than two elements. They can have three or more elements. Now they're called oxyacids because these acids also contain oxygen. When you name an oxyacid, you do not use the prefix hydro. Instead, you're going to go to table F. Table F is a list of the anions and cations frequently used in chemistry. Now, if the negative ion in the acid ends in 8, then the 8 changes to ic. That's how we get the names of acids such as sulfuric acid, nitric acid, phosphoric acid. Now, if the negative ion ends in ite, ite becomes us. So those acids would be nitrous acid, sulfurous acid. So let's take a look at this example, HBr. Do you notice that HBr only has two elements? That means it's going to begin with the prefix hydro and end in ic. This is called hydrobromic acid. In the next example, we have three elements. We have oxygen. This is an oxyacid. We now go to table F and we look up the CO3 ion. The CO3 ion is called carbonate. Eight becomes ic. We don't use the prefix hydro. The name of this acid is carbonic acid. In the last example, which is also an oxyacid, we look up the SO3 ion. SO3 is sulfite. Ite becomes us. We don't use the prefix hydro. This is called sulfurous acid. We want to look at three different theories in defining acids and bases. We've already considered Arrhenius' theory. Arrhenius says that an acid is something that produces hydrogen ion in water, and a base is something that produces hydroxide ion in water. Now the Bronsted-Lowry theory says that an acid is something that donates a hydrogen ion, and a base is something that accepts a hydrogen ion. Now sometimes we use the word proton instead of hydrogen ion. So acids are proton donors, bases are proton acceptors. The last theory is Lewis theory. An acid, according to Lewis theory, is an electron pair acceptor. A base is an electron pair donor. We're not going to focus a lot of attention on Lewis theory. It's just important that you know that there are three different theories to describe acid and base behavior. Arrhenius theory is used only in water. Bronsted-Lowry is for any solvent. And Lewis is used mainly in organic chemistry. Let's now look at Bronsted-Lowry theory in more detail. Acids are defined as proton donors. Bases are defined as proton acceptors. A proton is really just a hydrogen atom that has lost its electron. And remember, when something loses an electron, it forms a positive ion. This is why hydrogen ion is referred to as a proton. Let's consider this example. 
what we're going to do is connect the substances on opposite sides of the arrow that look similar. Do you notice that when ammonia, NH3, changes into NH4 on the other side of the arrow, it has gained a hydrogen. It has gained a proton. That means the ammonia is acting like a base. Now the HCl on the left is losing its hydrogen to change to the chloride ion on the right. That means hydrogen chloride is losing a hydrogen ion. It's losing a proton to change into the chloride ion. HCl is acting like an acid. Now NH3 and NH4 are called conjugate acid-base pairs. Hydrogen chloride and chloride are also conjugate acid-base pairs. An acid on one side changes into a base on the other side. Notice that this is not a neutralization reaction. This is a reaction in which hydrogen ion is exchanged between substances. Now, strong acids have weak conjugate base pairs and vice versa. You're going to go to table N to check for the strengths of acids and bases. Now, if you look at HCl on table N, you'll see that HCl is a very strong acid. That means that the chloride ion is a very weak base. Now, ammonia is considered a strong base from table N, and that would mean that the ammonium ion is a weak acid. Take a look at these conjugate acid-base pairs, HCl and Cl negative, NH4 and NH3, CH3, COOH, and the acetate ion, and then HNO3 and NO3. Well, how do they differ? They differ by a hydrogen ion transfer. Notice that the acid has one more hydrogen than its conjugate base. A Bronsted-Lowry acid is a proton donor. A Bronsted-Lowry base is a proton acceptor. Take a look at this example. The base, ammonia, changes into the ammonium ion. That means the ammonia has gained a hydrogen and become the ammonium ion. They are a conjugate acid-base pair. The water has lost a hydrogen to become the hydroxide ion. That means that water and the hydroxide ion are also a conjugate acid-base pair.